If you've seen my previous videos, you know I'm very keen uh, on software-defined radios, and I'll provide a link below to my Pieboard radio where I kind of did uh, kind of one of the first SDRs that I'd done, uh, went through the concepts and so on and so forth. But what I thought I'd do in this video is build up a software-defined uh, IoT-style radio using um, the ESP32 as core processor. Uh, by IoT, I mean all the core processing is going to be on the ESP32, but that the device will expose uh, over the internet a REST interface for control, and further will stream audio via TCP IP to a, to a browser. Let's just walk through the high-level architecture, at least uh, how I'm thinking about this right, right at the moment. Uh, and just a quick note, uh, so stuff I've done in previous videos is in this uh, green, is in this green color here, the dark green color here. So all the left-hand side I've done before in the Pi board radio. Uh, stuff in the light green I've done, but I haven't done a video on it. So this is the audio pipeline component that's uh, exposed out of the ESP ADF, for example. I haven't, uh, I've done that, but I haven't done a video on it. And then finally, stuff it with a red dot here is stuff uh, that I haven't done at all myself. So that will be uh, in pure uh, experimental territory for myself. Now, it certainly can be done. There's no question of it. Uh, I just haven't done it myself. Let's just quickly walk through the uh, kind of high-level componentry here, and let's start over on the left-hand side with the band pass filter and the TALO detector. So um, this is the, um, I think uh, if you've seen my previous videos, this is the TALO detector that I'd built up before. And uh, basically, um, in a nutshell, this is a direct conversion receiver which outputs an IANIQ audio signal um, uh, where the SI5351 chooses the uh, receiving frequency. Um, now, out of the SI5351, you get the 0 and 90 degrees uh, LO signal out of that. Again, I'll provide a link below to the uh, Pieboard Radio Project, and it explains in detail how that all works. So moving on, uh, the next com major component is this audio board down the bottom here. The audio board's job is to basically take the uh, audio signals here, the I and the Q audio signals, and transform them into I2S signals. So I2S is a, uh, a sound standard, and those sound signals uh, are passed over I2S to the, to the core processor. So if you have a look here, and uh, this is the uh, the same PMOB board that I uh, that I used earlier. Let me just zoom in a little bit there. And you can see there's a line in and a line out there, and all those lines on the left-hand side are the I2S signals. Uh, and I'll walk through that in a little more detail later on. So moving on, obviously the biggest component is the ESP32 itself. And there's a couple of, a few sub-modules that I want to walk through here. So... Uh, the, this is the primary audio processor. So what it basically does is it takes the I and the Q audio from the audio board, uh, it ingests them through, uh, through the audio pipeline, and then there, we use a, a DSP library to do phase shifting. And the, the purpose for phase shifting is uh, we want to remove the unwanted sideband from, from this signal here. So you're either add them or subtract the two signals and that'll uh, remove the upper sideband or the lower sideband. So in the next video I'm going to cover this component in a lot more detail. So I've, I've, I've got most of this working. I haven't got the MP, MP3 stream component working yet but I have all this working in the ESP uh, ADF for the uh, uh, audio development framework. So moving on, the other, some of the other uh, capabilities, the ES30, uh, ESP32 that we're using, there's obviously a REST control interface here. Now the ESP IDF provides full support for Wi-Fi. It's got a web server on board. So, so that should be pretty straightforward. Uh, the output will be XML over HTTP, and there'll be an inbound uh, request interface and an outbound response interface. Now that REST control interface is used to both uh, query the status of the of the radio in here, but also to control uh, various aspects of the radio. So obviously one of the primary things that this control interface is going to control is the re receiving frequency. Now when I get the Teensy audio board, uh, and let me just show you the Teensy audio board here. I've actually uh, used this quite a bit in the past. So this uh, is uh, another codec. Um, now this usually comes with the, with the Teensy itself, but uh, you know, uh, I'm going to use it as a, as a separate audio board here. 
So we, we're able to control the frequency uh, through, through this I2C interface here, potentially control the, the Teensy. Um, and then down here, some of the capabilities that we'll be using in the underlying frameworks, obviously Wi-Fi I mentioned before, I2S, web server. Uh, I'll go into the ESP ADF in, in, in a lot of detail in the next video, but basically what the ADF provides is a pluggable audio pipeline where you can plug in your own filters into the pipeline and then there's basically a um, uh, a circular buffer between each of the each of the components. In, in a sense, it's very similar to in concept to the library that's provided for the Teensy Arduino um, uh, libraries. Final component we have up here up the top here is uh, is the browser itself, and there's there's two uh, major capabilities that it, we're going to be looking at. Uh, th through the browser. The first one is the control user interface. So that's going to be JavaScript and it's basically going to invoke this REST control interface using XML over HTTP to control various uh, aspects of the radio, frequency and upper, lower, side down and so on, so on and so forth. And then what I'd also like to do, and this is uh, you know where I've got to do a bit more research, is I'd also like to be able to stream the audio from the audio pipeline directly into the browser. So in other words, this will be completely headless. Uh, in this case, I won't need any speakers on here. All I'll need is a browser. This, this is going to expose some HTTP and some streaming endpoints, and then I'll be able to hook a browser up to it, and that'll be my IoT radio. So what I'm going to move on to uh, in the next video is to focus on this audio pipeline uh, component here. So I'll walk through how to use, use the ESP ADF. I'll walk through some of the phase shift uh, code that I've got together, and that'll come right up.